David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you one of the more recent releases by Diplomat in their Aero slash Elox lineup, and that would be the Elox Matrix. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this unique pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks over at Goldspot Pens who provided the pen you will see today for review. Uh, over the last few years, Diplomat has really been killing it with their new releases in this lineup. Uh, between the Arrow and the Elox, their color selection uh, has been outstanding in my opinion. Uh, each of the new models really pop with vibrant hues. So compliments go out to whoever is making the color decisions over at Diplomat. The pen arrives in this standard Diplomat box. Uh, I like their box. It's unique. I like this metal lid that slides off. And then under the flap, we have a tray. And under the tray, we have a little warranty card as well as two ink cartridges. And then attached to the tray, we have a pen. This is the Diplomat Elox Matrix. Uh, even though the Elox looks very similar to the Arrow, it uh, has the same dimensions and utilizes many of the same parts, uh, it is indeed a different model. The Elox name is derived from the German word for anodize, which is Eloxarin. Uh, this is appropriate considering the pen features a unique, innovative double anodization process. Uh, the pen is made from aluminum, and while the distinguishing feature on the arrow are the grooves in the cap and the barrel, uh, with most Elox models, the cap and barrel contain rings. Uh, here's a look at the orange model, uh, but the matrix is a bit different. You can see here that it has offset vertical and horizontal hash marks. Uh, it's reminiscent of the reigning code from the matrix films. Um, what I like about this look is that there is no discernible pattern to the marks. I looked at it for a while and couldn't notice any repeating pattern between the cap and barrel or anywhere else on the pen, so a bit of thought and effort went into the creation of this look. It just wasn't a cut and paste job. Um, my biggest surprise with this pen was the tactile feeling of the grooves. Um, while I like the overall feeling of the pen, I do find some of the edges on the engraving to be slightly raised and on the verge of almost being sharp. I tried to get some microscope pictures here of the end of the grooves, uh, and while I think the pictures look really cool, I, I couldn't really get one that I felt adequately represented the burrs that uh, you can kind of see here on the ends. Um, I believe these lines are machine engraved rather than being laser engraved. Uh, you can imagine that when the drill bit is entering and exiting the material, there might be a bit of a dirty edge on those points. I think that maybe there could have been some additional polishing done in order to minimize those edges. It was just something that surprised me a little bit when I first picked up the pen. I wouldn't categorize it as a major issue, just something that I noticed. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it is topped with the Diplomat Ink Drop Flower logo, which is their take on a Maltese cross. Uh, it's a silvery gray on a matte black background. The Maltese cross has a long history of association with truth and sincerity and mercy in both sacred and secular use. Uh, they come in many forms, but here's just one example. Uh, you'll find them used by a large number of police and fire departments in their logos as well. This transitions into the matte black clip. I like the style of this clip. It has a rather low profile and in relation to the overall size of the cap is longer than you would find on most other pens. I feel it fits the look and feel of this Zeppelin shaped pen though. Um, the cap angles up until you get to the end where there isn't a traditional band, but the space devoid of any lines where it has the company name, Diplomat, and on the other side it says Germany, which is where Diplomat is based and where these pens are manufactured. The transition between the cap and barrel is smooth. The barrel almost immediately begins its decline as it tapers down to a point where there is a matte black tip. Uh, the cap snaps off. Um, I can't review an Elox or an Arrow without mentioning how incredibly satisfying the capping mechanism is on these pens. Uh, it just has a really smooth action, as opposed to a, you know, a more violent adhesion. 
Um, if I ever did a video on the most satisfying capping experiences, these diplomats would certainly be very high on the list. Uh, that and the Pilot Prera, that's another one as well that's really great. Uh, maybe in the comments, let me know what pen in your collection has the best capping experience. And it doesn't just need to be a snap cap either. There are some really great twist caps out there that can be unique and provide a satisfying experience as well. Um, with these pens, I always find myself playing a bit with the cap, almost like a fidget toy. They're just so neat. Um, once you are through playing around with the cap, underneath we have a number six stainless steel nib. It is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. I believe Diplomat uses Yovo nibs, but I would not categorize these as standard Yovo nibs. Uh, the writing experience you receive with this nib on the Elox and the Arrow is unique. Um, I care for it a great deal. Uh, there is something just really satisfying about the unique feedback that these nibs provide. Um, it's just one of those nibs that if I was blindfolded and had in a generic pen body, I'd be able to instantly recognize by the writing experience it provides. Um, I have a gold nib on one of the arrows in my collection, and I actually prefer the stainless steel over the gold for these pens. The section begins with a groove, which is used in the capping mechanism. It angles up fairly steeply until an angled rise to the remainder of the barrel. Um, even though this section is metal, I don't find it to be slick or uncomfortable. Um, I think the pop of green really matches nicely with the color on the rest of the pen as well. The cap does post. Um, it does stay on there, but I can't say that it's extremely secure. Um, there is a plastic inner ring on the cap to prevent metal on metal contact, which would be a bad thing. Um, while the pen is decently balanced while posted, uh, I find the edge of the cap, while not overly sharp, does kind of hit right on the side of my hand, which isn't my favorite tactile experience, so I prefer to use this pen unposted. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges, two of which are provided, and a converter is provided as well. Uh, with the abundance of metal in this pen, eye dropping would not be recommended. Um, at Goldspot, this pen retails for $220. I'll put a link to their site in the notes below. I feel that that's a reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. I am a big fan of both e the Elox and the Arrow models from Diplomat, and uh, this pen is just really sharp. I think it's an interesting addition to their lineup. And I like that this one uh, provides a bit of a different exterior design as opposed to just the same rings but in a new vibrant color. Now, doing that would have been okay, but I feel that the decision to do something a little bit different with the Matrix model was a good decision. Okay, now it is time for some measurements size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we have some size comparisons for the Diplomat Elox Matrix. I just think the hash marks on here look pretty cool. But in regard to those size comparisons, in regard to some of the Aero models, this is what it looks like with the turquoise. Uh, and then here it is with the orange. Uh, here is one in black. And then finally, I showed you a picture earlier, but this is the, we'll call it the standard Elox model with the rings. In regard to some non-diplomat pens, here it is with a Lamy Safari and a Twisby Diamond 580. And finally, this is a Montegrappa Elmo, and this edition is called the Chrysiocola. In regard to the uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Safari the Diamond 580, and then the Montegrappa Chrysiocola. Well, it's the Elmo, but the Elmo Chrysiocola. So here we have the Diplomat. And this is the Elox Matrix. 
and this is a broad stainless steel nib. And the ink that I have in here is the one I had in here just from a couple of reviews ago, which is from Papier Plume. Which is their neutral ground. I thought it matched nicely with this pen. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice vibrant green with a bit of a shading to it, a bit of pop to it. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Diamine Apple Glory, as well as Seiss Kreuznach Lime Green. This is what the 30 milliliter bottles look like. Uh, this is part of their Mardi Gras set. Uh, if you like this, they have it uh, up on their website for Papier Plume on, uh, as a set, uh, as well as individual bottles you could purchase. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, I'm a big fan of Diplomat nibs. Like I said, that you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of this nib. Uh, this is a broad, so it is laying down a bit of ink and it is a bit of a broader line. In regard to some reverse writing, it is very scratchy. It gets the job done though. Uh, in regard to some fast writing, The feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Diplomat Elox Matrix. Uh, I think that this is an interesting addition to the Elox lineup. Uh, and as I mentioned, I'm a big fan of what Diplomat's been doing with all of the, uh, the colors and uh, different styles that they have been introducing of this pen. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.